Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 135. Subscribe for edit videos daily. I'm the healer. You're the DPS. Stop doing my job. Okay. Now this will begin with a bit of terminology. I play Final Fantasy XIV, FFXIV, which is a multiplayer video game. In FFXIV, there are three types of classes. Tank, who leads the way and makes sure enemies don't attack anyone else. Healer, who heals damage and resurrects dead players. And DPS, who deals the majority of the damage. Dungeons are ran with a tank, a healer and two DPS, usually randomly assembled from people who queue up for the dungeon. The class I play is Red Mage, who, importantly to this story, is unique among DPS classes in the sense it can do a pretty decent healing output and very easily resurrect others, something even healers can't do, without going to details. Healers can only resurrect instantly once a minute, Red Mages can do it every 5 seconds. Dungeons have 3 bosses, each harder than the last. So this happened yesterday, when I got into a dungeon. Kitana Ravel for the knowledgeable, with a scholar as a healer. Note, Kitana is a pretty high level dungeon, definitely not for beginners. Red flags went off immediately, because for some reason Kitana tends to attract questionable scholars in my experience. Note that the scholar wasn't new to this dungeon. We go through the first boss with relative ease, but in the second boss the scholar is struggling to heal the incoming damage, and then dies when a pillar falls on them. I casually resurrect them and heal the tank while they're resurrecting. They got mad, but didn't tell. Then later on the tank gets bold and collects more enemies than they can chew, and the healer is doing kind of subpar healing, so I again pitch in with my healing spell. The third and final boss comes and those who already ran it know that the final boss of Katana is especially tough because of the sheer amount of unavoidable, and much more avoidable, damage. We start and I can already see the scholar isn't using their abilities effectively to mitigate and heal damage with the exact spell needed for the situation. They also aren't running away when an enemy ability requires them to run away. I tell them that's what the ability requires, and they don't answer. Nor run away when the boss uses the ability on them again. This goes on for a bit, then the tank dies. I casually resurrect them and then heal them up. Healer dies shortly after. I resurrect them too. We eventually wipe when I die and the healer starts casting a long resurrection spell. They used their once a minute resurrect instantly ability on the tank, on me, gets interrupted by damage, and dies to an avoidable boss ability, then tank and other DPS die. We have to go back to the boss and start it from the beginning since everyone died. This is called a wipe, and while legging it there, scholar goes off on me. Paraphrased, I wasted swift cast on the tank. Stop doing my job. I'm the healer, you're the DPS, stop doing my job. I literally saved us a good couple times, but sure buddy, I reply with an okay. Boss time. Right off the bat, we get severely damaged by unavoidable damage and healer isn't using their correct abilities. I just mind my business and DPS. Then healer dies, ironically, because they still weren't running away from that one boss ability. Tank eyes me expectantly. I cast another Verthinder. A DPS spell. Tank is trying their best to keep themselves alive, but tanks are not healers, nor red mages, and eventually they go down. The boss targets the other DPS next and hits them heavy. If only I had a healing spell. They go down and since I'm refusing to heal even myself, I die. That's a wipe. Folks, as we are all going back to the boss, Tank asks me why I didn't resurrect the healer, or them. I reply scholar asked me to do my job and DPS. Tank responds with opening a vote to kick the scholar from the group. The vote passes with flying colors. A couple minutes later, we get another healer, a white mage this time, and we finish the final boss without any further issues. Thank you. Next. Bad orders are still orders. Bad orders that don't get you or others killed or in trouble are for ripe malicious compliance. During basic training for the Air Force. We had a temporary assistant TI, never call them the junior TI. We were going somewhere one day and we had just started marching out of our squadron. We came up on the exit, and instead of ordering us to turn left, he called out column right. So we turned right, which had us marching directly into a wall, where we stacked up like old comedy movie, marching in place. The TI screamed at us what are you doing? 
pointing at a random member of the flight. Name. Why did you do this, sir? You called Colum right, sir. No I didn't. And continued to yell at us. At no point did he tell us to stop, break formation and reform pointing the way we had been going. So there we are marching in place, getting yelled at. Finally a senior TI from another flight comes up, tells our TI to stop yelling. Takes command of us. Halt, break, reform over there, and wait. He and the assistant TI walk away. That was the last we saw of that TI. Eventually another TI came up to us. Asked where we were going and took command and got us there. Over dinner we found out there two other flights behind us. Several TIs in the squad and senior co. The reason we were left for 5 minutes getting yelled at, was because the TIs were all laughing too hard to properly fix the situation. The only reference our senior TI made to the event, was to point to one of the members of the flight. If I ever give a boneheaded marching command, you have permission to speak up with a big loud sir? Apostrophe. Sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Next. Cover yourself please. I am a very well endowed woman. I have been since I was 13 and as I get older they get bigger. My father has always had a hard time with that, even though my mother is who I inherited it from. Anytime I show a hint of cleavage he gets uncomfortable. Or he did. A few years ago I briefly moved back in with my parents to prepare to move out of state when my apartment complex was sold and renovated and rent went from $1000 slash month to $2000 slash month. I was 33 at the time, and I was wearing something that showed cleavage. He wasn't rude, but he made a comment about it drawing attention, cause we were all going out to eat. So I said okay, I'll change, be right back. Now any woman with large breasts knows that certain clothes and certain materials and cuts will emphasize those, and it's not always just cleavage shirts that make them stick out. I had this maroon turtleneck, it was that bodican material. Went from neck to hip, neck to fingertips. No skin exposed. So I put it on and came back to the kitchen. The look on my father's face was priceless. He couldn't say anything about cleavage showing, but this shirt hugged, I mean hugged my breasts and made them look even bigger than they did before. I was like so you think this is better huh? Needless to say, my father never commented on my cleavage showing ever again. Edit. No, I'm not posting pics. Edit 2. I hope all of you that decided to follow me realize I don't have any full frontal pictures of myself up lol. Edit 3. No really, there's no pics of me on my profile. Edit 4. Okay I lied. You can sort of see my nose behind my cat in one photo, if noses are your thing. Thank you. Next. Won't pay me incentive you offered? Fine. Stay short staffed. Obligatory not my story but my mom's. Not the craziest story, but still. So my mom is a nurse on a cardiac unit. With everything opening back up after the great shutdown of 2020, they have been an influx of patients who put off surgical procedures that are now getting them. As a result many hospitals went from being in the bizarre predicament of sending home nurses during a pandemic, to being woefully understaffed. When things are so understaffed, hospitals offer extra pay to get people to pick up extra shifts. As a night nurse, my mom offered to stay a few extra hours and help pass meds act to help out the overworked day team. She commented that it would be worth it to stay a few hours for incentive pay. The manager commented that it was unlikely that incentive would be approved for a partial shift. So, my mom went home. So, the moral of the story is, if you are going to offer incentive to anyone else working extra, give it to people who are willing to stay after a 13 hour shift, or get no help at all and erode the future willingness of that person to help. Thank you. Next. Lady cusses me out for skating so I get her kicked out of her apartment. I'm on phone so sorry for bad formatting. So some backstory, me and my friend go skating pretty much every day and we decided to go just skate in the parking lot of the apartment I live in. Also my mum owns this apartment complex and because of that I know pretty much everyone who lives there. Now into the story, me and my friend were just chillin and taking a break and get some stuff to drink and this lady walks into the parking lot and I don't really recognize her so I assume she is just taking a shortcut somewhere but when she walks past she just randomly said why don't you fuck off back home you racist slur. Me and my friend are both black, 
I just stood there a bit confused and shocked and just as I'm about to say something she says again go on. Get moving you racist slur again this is when I ask if she lives here and she says of course, I live here, now fuck off. She said some other stuff but I don't really remember it but there was one line that really stuck in my mind and it was why don't you go cry to her mummy. So that is exactly what we did. Me and my friend just went inside to tell my mum and as we are walking in my friend puts his phone in front of me and played a video of the entire thing and he just looked at me and kinda smiled. So when we get inside my mum said her home early everything okay? And we tell her what happened and showed her the video and I could see her getting angrier and angrier as the video goes on and she says to us I'll be back and walks out the apartment and a few minutes later comes back and says she won't be bothering you. Any longer so me and my friend go back out and keep skating and a few hours later we see her putting some suitcases in her car and then drive off and I haven't seen her since. Thank you. Next. Don't want to sing the extra part. Okay. Note. I am writing this on my way to the store. As such it's not the best. We'll edit when I get home. First off this one doesn't have very big consequences as opposed to a lot of the others but it was still something that to this day makes me laugh. It was around November in Canada and it was snowing hard. As such the teachers all thought it would be a good idea to get almost all of us. About 400 or so. Grades kindergarten threw six kids together in the gymnasium to sing Christmas carols together since it was way too cold to go outside. So the first few songs come on the projector and everything goes fine with singing enjoying ourselves while the musical teacher plays on the keyboard. After about maybe four songs or so the next song comes up Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now for anybody who knows the song growing up there is some added lyrics we would always add. For example like the lyric would say had a very shiny nose, we would all like to add like a light bulb right after. Anyways the teacher starts playing and we start singing the song. After about maybe two to three lines she stops and told us we have to sing it correctly and to not sing the added bits. Now not one of us like this at all. We had been so used to singing it our way. Malicious compliance. The teacher sits back down and starts playing. Every child in the audience starts singing the song. However when the extra lyrics were supposed to happen we would whisper them. Now I don't know if you ever heard about 400 students whispering at once. It's very easy to be heard. The second the first line was done the teacher stops for about a second. Sighs and allows us to continue on with our whispering extra lyrics. Moral of the story don't tell young kids not to do something. Thank you. Next. Asking for a break. This was a few years ago. I used to want to work in law enforcement so I was a cadet at my local sheriff's office. We work in records, front desk, did parking tickets and other related tasks at the department. My boss was a Vietnam vet with a stick so far up his ass that you could see it stab his uvula when he yelled at you. Anyway, this dude just loved the power of being in charge, even though he was basically just a schedule guy and not even an officer didn't even have a badge so his only power came from torturing me. He chose me over others cause I refused to fall in line or to be a soldier. I did not buy into that military mindset. He got me in trouble for whatever he could find. One time I was working in records and the other cadet at the front lobby asked if I could cover her lunch early cause she skipped breakfast I said sure and took the later lunch to help out. This was a totally normal thing they even told us to do this. About 5 minutes after he came out and asked what time I'd cover her lunch and when he found out he called me to his cubicle and yelled at me embarrassingly in front of everyone in the office. So at that point I was 2 years in and fed up. That weekend we had a cadet meeting. In that meeting I asked in front of everyone, do we need to ask you permission when we are covering each other at the front desk for lunch or restroom the room was silent the sergeant and captain looked at me thinking oh shit they are thinking for themselves and all of my fellow cadet gave me the what the hell look. The boss man answers with basically I am the man, I am who you go to if the schedule changes and if I set a schedule it must be that way the sergeant and captain tried to intervene and save it for the bathroom or lunch we don't need to ask. Since that's what we already do and are told to do, bib the schedule boss made his point so I said, fake name, alright Joey I understand now. From that point on if I was going to leave to go to lunch, if I was going to cover someone going to the lunch or restroom I made sure I went over to Joey and asked permission just like he wanted and yelled at me for not doing. He even told me I don't have to and I said just wanna follow procedure and if he wasn't there I went to the sergeant to bother him and ask or even the captain. 
and I knew me following his dumb made up rule to the extreme annoyed the shit out of him. We eventually got talked to from the captain saying we don't have to do that and I did it whenever he decided to be a dick.